Good morning, everyone. I just finished mastering a new song for Scott Martin, and it's a real special one. We shot a music video for it and everything. It's called The Cities of Montezuma, and today I want to walk you through the mastering chain. We did this entirely in the box, so it's all things that you can do at home. There's maybe one or two specialized plugins that I'm using, but otherwise, it's all about concepts. It's fine if you don't have the same EQs or the same bus compressor. The purpose here is to train our ears and learn techniques and then you can use whatever tools you like to get the sound that you're looking for. So let's dig in. I'm in Pro Tools, so first I wanna show you guys how I'm routing all of these tracks. So here we have the mix, which goes through a series of two buses in a row. And there's a reason for that, which we'll get to. So the first bus I call pre-main, which then feeds the main output bus. And I kinda just use that for monitoring. And then we have a print track, which you can see here has the same input as the main output bus, so that whatever I'm monitoring here is what's getting printed. I have a master track here, which is where I do all of the mastering processing, and that is affecting the output going into the pre-main bus, which then gets printed as it goes through the main bus. So real quick, signal flow top to bottom. We have our mix, which goes through a pre-main bus, which then goes through a main output bus for monitoring. All of the mastering processing is applied here so that it gets printed when it goes to the print track. Okay, now the reason we're all here, let's get into some mastering. First, I'm gonna play you a quick before and after, and I'll try to level match them as much as possible. Here's with all of the mastering processing turned off. To me, the track comes together much more. The details are brought up. I went with a touch more low end. And then of course, volume. I'm hitting about minus 10 loudness units. So let's just quickly walk through all of the plugins and then we'll break them down one by one. At the top, we've got an EQ. Then we go into the virtual mix rack, which is doing two things here. We've got uh, some harmonic distortion for a little bit of level and a bit more gradual of an EQ. Then we go into Soothe 2, taming some harshness. The SSL bus compressor, a little bit of that glue. Virtual Tape Machine, I'm excited to show you guys how we're using that. Ozone for some multiband dynamics, and the FabFilter Pro L2 for some of that final level. Let's turn them all off and we'll go through the chain. So with the EQ, I'm notching out a little bit here at 2.5K. There was a bit of buildup and I wanted to smooth it out. And so to compensate, I brought up 2K with a much wider bell and this one's only on the side. So if you've ever heard the term mid-side EQ before, that's what I'm doing here. I'm only bringing up 2K on the sides, which can make it feel a little bit wider. Yeah, so it's just taming some of the harshness I was hearing here in the vocal, some of this. Let's solo that out so you can hear what it's doing. You can hear there's a few different things that that's peaking on. The snare drum, the vocal itself, um, a couple of different uh, vocal textures that are going on in the background there. So I'm just bringing that down a little bit. And then again, we pull it back up on the sides. It's only 0.2 dB, so we're talking real subtle. I don't know if I'd even hear it if you were going back and forth, but it made me feel good when I did it. Next, we're going into the Slate Digital Virtual Mix Rack. First, into the Virtual Mix Bus. So let's turn this EQ off for now. I love this as sort of my first line of defense against transients. It does a really nice job shaping them while cutting them off a little bit so we can get some of that volume back. And you can hear when I push it too hard. we get tons of distortion on the kick drum and pretty much everything else. So I settled a bit lower on that one right here at about 3.5. And with this EQ, I'm shaping up the top end a little bit. I'm taking 2K down 1.25 dB, but I'm bringing 12K 
up by 1 dB. Very subtle here, but by shifting one range down and the other up, the total EQ change is about 2.25 dB, but neither of them have to work too hard to get there. Let's take a listen with the EQ off. Yeah, let's pop that on and off a few times as we play it back. Here's off. Yeah, to me, that just brings out some of the clarity in the strumming of the acoustic guitar, some of those different top end instruments. I really like where that's placing it. Next up, we have Soothe 2, and this is one of those specialty plugins. It's a resonance suppressor. Um, you can see that I have the high and low pass filters cranked pretty high, all the way up here at about 1K, um, and this one's at 8K. But the main focus, I'm, I'm pushing the sensitivity up at this 3K range, which to my ears is where the vocal harshness lives. So I'm gonna push that real hard so you guys can hear what it's doing. Let's push to the extreme. When we do these demos, I do like to push things really hard so you can hear what they're doing. Um, sort of the art of what we do here as mixing and mastering engineers is to be a bit more subtle and, and get the results we want in as transparent of a way as possible. But if I'm really subtle in these demos, it can be hard to hear what these different tools are doing. So I like to push them really hard and then we'll, we'll pull it back to where we landed for the actual master. This was pushing the depth to 10 and you can hear the artifacts here. It's pulling out a lot in the vocal and it's making it sound really artificial. So I settled back here right around three. And again, let's turn this off. It's just smoothing that vocal out, all the things in the top end. And what I love about this tool that is different than some of the EQs that we did is that it's dynamic. So when those resonances aren't happening, it's not doing anything. So it's just controlling it as needed in a way that we would need to automate phrase by phrase if we didn't have something like this. So next up is the SSL bus compressor, and it's my go-to bus compressor, and we're actually hitting it pretty hard here. I think we're digging into about minus four dB, which at the mastering stage is pretty heavy-handed. But if you look at the attack and the release here, we have the slowest attack and the auto release, which to me really eliminates all of the pumping we would hear if we were hitting minus four dB of compression with a consistent release time. So I know I want my threshold right here at about 6.3. So let's turn that all the way up and then we'll slowly bring it back down so we can hear what it's doing and sort of how we landed there. Cool, so we're just tapping the meter on some of these kick drum hits. Let's bring that in a little bit. Here's 6.3, this is where I landed when doing the actual master, and sometimes we go even farther than that 4 dB. Let's take that chorus one more time. And let's push it. So even, I mean, cranking it into 8 dB, I, I wouldn't leave it there. It's a little too extreme for me, but with that auto release, you can still see it's still kind of finding its way back. Let's do that same exercise going through a couple of these different attack and release settings. Let's pull the attack to 10 milliseconds and release as fast as it goes. This might be something you want to use uh, more of a hard rock song. So it's going to sound a little out of place here. Let's do that same thing. We'll bring the threshold all the way up and slowly pull it down. See, we're already hitting more compression than we were with the slower attack immediately.
Yeah, to me, even right here, this is roughly where we were hitting with the auto release. The whole track sounds much jumpier. Like I can just hear when that compressor is reacting and that's not what we want on a track like this. To me, this song is smooth and everything that we do should be keeping it that way. It should be enhancing the smoothness here, gluing it together rather than making it move harder. Next, we did some heavy lifting with the virtual tape machine. This one I'm pushing a little bit of gain, but I'm not going for any additional saturation here. There may be a touch, but it's not really what I'm focused on here. What I am using it for is low end. This plugin adds low end by default, and some people have criticized it saying, oh, it's just adding low end, of course it's gonna sound warmer. And that may be true, but if we know that and we use it intentionally, then I think it's a great use of a cool tool. And I really like how it shapes the bottom end. So here's a before and after on that. So to me, this plugin's all about the bottom end. Just like the virtual mix rack, I use this custom series equalizer to shape the top end. I'm using the virtual tape machine and for the qualities that it brings to the low end, in my opinion. Let's push it a little bit. I want you guys to be able to hear the saturation if that is what you wanted to use this tool for. So at 10 dB, it's crunchy the whole time especially crunchy when the kick drum hits. You maybe get away with 5 dB here. It's still crunchy, but it is warm. I'm gonna land back here at 1.5. Still getting that warmth in the bottom end, a little bit of a uh, transient suppression here with some of that crunchiness, but we're not driving it into noticeable distortion. Next up, we're using ozone dynamics. And the biggest takeaway here is the cutoffs. So I've got one at 90, so everything below 90, what I'd consider to be the subs, from 90 up to 1K for a nice wide mid-range, uh, from 1K to 3K here for sort of that harshness where the vocal can be a little jumpy on certain words, uh, just controlling that a little bit. And then from 3K, all the way to the top. We're using really low ratios here, and I'm not doing any limiting, only subtle compression. I'm aiming for under two dB per band, but this is a nice way to bring the song up and bring out some of the details. Let's solo each band and take a listen. Let's see if we can uh, if we can hear what's going on. This is just the sub range, and we're gonna turn the compression off. Yeah, I'm not really hitting much more than the 1.8, but generally even much lower than that. The goal here is not to crush each band, but rather to have control of each band and, and get some compression on the whole song, but dealing with much smaller sections of the frequency spectrum, so it's a little bit more transparent. Let's hear what the mid-range is doing. This one occasionally taps 2 dBs of compression here. Soloing the upper mid-range. This one I think will hear more of that compression as it reacts to the snares. Let's turn that on. It's actually reacting more to the vocal, which I really like. And the top end, this one's gonna be a little less fun to listen to on its own, but let's go for it.
So if you're having trouble hearing the difference between the compressors on and off for each of these individual bands, that's a good thing. Honestly, so am I. I am not trying to have audible compression. I want subtle compression because again, when we are applying these little pieces of compression to the individual parts of the frequency spectrum, we're able to stay subtle and stay transparent while taming the dynamics a little bit more. So that was a fun exercise. I don't know how important it is to sit and solo these bands. I didn't do a lot of soloing when I was initially making these decisions when I mastered the track, but it's fun to go through and see if we can, we can hear what they're doing on a band by band level. For comparison, let's turn all of this compression off. Yeah, there's a tightness there that I really like. I love the way it all comes together going through there. All right, we made it to the last plugin in the chain, the FabFilter Pro L2. And I'm using this one for some final gain. I like this plugin a lot because first of all, how it sounds, but also the functionality. There's a lot of different limiting modes that you can choose from depending on the genre of music you're working in. And I also love the metering. It's measured in loudness units, so I don't need additional metering plugins. I can use the plugin that I'm applying the gain to uh, to judge my overall volume, which is really convenient. Let's check it out. So let's check out the interface. I'm gonna run some sound through it. And you can see this little graph comes up as it gets signal and it's showing us where there's gain reduction. The parts highlighted in red are the parts that are being taken off. Um, I pushed it 4 dB into the plugin to get some gain. And at the peaks, it's, you know, 8.7, but mostly hovering around minus nine loudness units. Let's pull this down. Okay, so now we're back to about, yeah, minus 14. Let's slowly bring the gain up. I'm gonna push it farther than we took it in the final, so you can hear again what this plugin can do. So this is pushing it eight decibels. It's twice as far as we pushed it in the final master. In my opinion, it's way too hard. I can hear audible distortion on the kick drum and nearly everything, even between the transients, is getting limited. Um, whereas I really just want to control those last few peaks to try and get this gained up to where I feel comfortable without taking it too far. But let's see what this sounds like, and then we'll pull it back down. Yeah, minus five, minus six loudness units is crushing, and we can hear it's pretty distorted the whole way through. But I do want you to hear what this plugin sounds like pushed too hard. That's kind of how we can determine where we want it to land, right? We have to go a little farther and pull it back. We have to go a little bit under and find that sweet spot. So let's bring this back down. Let's see what pushing it six decibels in does. Yeah, to me, still way too squashed. The brushes of the snare drum are getting limited, and there's really no reason to push it that hard on a song like this. It feels very squashed to me. There is less audible distortion than when we were pushing this uh, another two decibels into limiting, but still way too much in my opinion. Let's bring this back down to four, which is where I landed for the final master. Yeah, that sounds really nice to me. We're getting some gain reduction on those kick drums, but the snares in between, nothing's really touching. And even the ones that are, it's maybe, you know, one decibel here. If this was a bigger hit, minus 2.8, minus three, very, very quickly. And I'm okay with that. It's getting it up to the level that I want. I'm not hearing the distortion. And even sometimes if you are, it's, it's a matter of subjectivity. Are you okay with the occasional kick drum 
maybe getting a little crunchy if the majority of your song hits the way that you want it to. So these are all decisions that you have to make when you're mastering. And sometimes it's driven by what the client wants. If they push you to make it louder, you might have to say, okay, well, it's it's going to get distorted and be okay with that. So thanks for sticking with me. Let's quickly listen again to the whole track with all of the mastering turned off. Here's our lead into the chorus. All the times you've been let down don't matter anymore. It's wherever you go, that's where you are. Awesome. Amazing mix. I thought they did such a great job with the production. And so what I wanted to achieve with the master was just maintaining all of that openness, gaining some volume and pulling it together a little bit more. I wanted some of those details to come out and I wanted it to glue a little bit more. So here's where we landed with that. We'll pop all those back on. All the times you've been let down don't matter anymore. It's wherever you go, that's where you are. Yeah, I'm hearing consistency in the vocal that I wasn't hearing before. Details like background vocals, bells are coming up. Everything's being pulled forward without crushing it too hard. So that's the mastering chain. That will vary song to song. And hopefully by showing you what it sounds like, when you push things a little too far and pulling them back, you get a sense of how to apply them to your songs and your own music. Everything's going to depend on the source. This is never to say that this is how to master every song, but it is how I went about mastering this one. Thanks again to Scott Martin for letting us use his new song. And if you had fun and found this video helpful, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.